Ooh. All right, here we go. Good, what was it, afternoon. Philadelphia Eagles fans, good afternoon NFL fans to week 10, 2020 season. Coming in hot today, um, I don't know, I'm just a little hyped because I, I got some things on my mind real quick. I'm not gonna take forever on this one. It's pretty straightforward to the point. My birds this week are gonna play off the New York football giants and what can be a separator in the division even more. Like, yeah, my Eagles, our record sucks right now, 3-4-1, and one, and we're in the first place by like a game and a half or like two games or something else. It's the craziest, I, I, I don't know. It's a weird season, it's a weird year. We just had a bye week, so we just came off of a victory against the Giants here at home, comeback win, 22-21, then we beat Dallas. All right. Everybody in the NFC East is struggling. The only win like outside of the NFC East was like when we beat San Fran and that was unexpected by a lot. A lot of people, not by me. Yes, because I predict the Eagles win every single week because I don't think a certain way. I don't know. That's how it works. But anyway, this week. Now the Giants are building some momentum, right? They scored a lot against us and we found a way to come back and win. They beat Washington last week. So it looks like, I mean, they've been scoring 20 plus points the last four weeks. So they're a team that we can't sleep on. Carson Wentz, there's been a lot of stuff about his decision making and what the birds need to do with him. Of course, we got Jalen Hurts right behind him. What are we gonna do? And then what are we gonna do with our coaching? Like a lot of people, I'm going to be honest with myself, Doug Peterson has a pass with me because the guy won is a Super Bowl. I know there's a lot of stuff with Frank Wright, a lot of stuff uh, with Nick Foles, a lot of stuff with just like the perfect storm like Garrett Blunt. I mean, you, you can name all sorts of people, but Doug Peterson winning the Super Bowl with his team in 2017, he's got a pass with me for a while, for a long, long time because I've been an Eagles fan my entire life, and so to be able to experience something like that. He can go for a long, long time. I mean, Andy Reid was here a long time, didn't win, win anything. I know we went to a lot of MC Championship games, but he didn't win anything. Dougie P, you gotta pass me for a while. But I'm gonna tell you what, what I hope that we are learning. And I'm gonna give some reasons why we can bury the Eagles, right? It's weird, because I'm an Eagles fan. I'm gonna be honest about it, but I'm gonna give the final reason why we shouldn't. <laughs> now, on the bye week, what do I do during the bye week? I do a lot of stuff. Uh, I keep on building on this container home. I keep on chopping wood. Uh, I keep on doing, all, I've been making epoxy tables. I mean, all sorts of stuff that's coming. I go out and do some salsa and bachata dancing. This, this is stuff that's gonna come out on the channel in the future. So I do all that stuff, but then I do invest some in my birds and go back and look at past games. I do some some research, yeah, I do. <laughs> I get really geeked out, and sometimes I don't. I don't tell you guys all the research I, sh I should. So I'm going to give you a little bit of what I looked at this last week, just a little bit because I don't want this video to go on forever. So I look at the past games and I see what what worked for us and who was playing, who had the big gains, uh, who was very effective. And I also look at past draft picks. Now, I sat and I looked at 2016 up to now and see what the draft picks with Doug Peterson's world is because there's a lot of people that I've given credit to Chip Kelly's team before, like Lane Johnson, Zacher, it's all those people that we got from them uh, back in the day where we got Brandon Graham. I mean, these are some of the people that keep coming up that were not drafted by Doug Peterson's crew. And if you look at their draft history, it looked bad. It looked bad. It looks like... Doug Peterson's crew doesn't know how to draft players. And players that either have a high talent level and no matter what, they find a way, or players that fit our system well. And between that, or, or and then it also doesn't look like we have the coaches to be able to change the plan that's necessary for the players that we draft. I mean, everything's not gonna fit super perfect. It's like you're having an interview, you're watching a kid in college, but you don't know the, all the dynamics of why that kid was good in college and the system and everything. I mean, you think you do, but then you draft them, you put them on your team, and they don't pan out. Well, if you look at a lot of our draft picks, a lot of our draft picks, 
I mean, there's only a few, like Jalen Mills is one that only starts, and he was a seventh round draft pick out of LSU. Obviously, we have the Carson Wentz pick. You have a couple people, uh, like Vitae, I don't think he's working on our squad anymore, Sam Alo, uh, Mylotta, which was later, it's like a, it was a, a project. You have all these picks, and of course, the recent ones that you have to keep on the team because you can't just admit failure right off. But I looked at two players. Nelson Aguilar was drafted by Chip Kelly, fine. He represents a point I'm trying to make, but also Russell Douglas. Those guys go somewhere else, Carolina, and to the Raiders, and they're starting to do well. I mean, Nelson Aguilar already has five touchdown catches. He's going to, looks like he's on track to eclipse what he did in 2017, obviously, when we won the Super Bowl. And then Russell Douglas, I believe, to date, hasn't been scored on yet as a corner, and he's in the top 15 of the league of cornerbacks. And we do need corner, right? So, poses to me saying, hey, look, why are we drafting these guys and not utilize them, they're going to another team and doing better. I mean, is, is it our scheme? Is it our coaches? Is it something about our culture? What is it that's causing for people to not do so well being drafted here? So you can look at all of that, those dynamics and absolutely bury the Eagles. You can also look at Carson Wentz. I mean, Carson Wentz has had a lot of mistakes this year. Fumbles, interceptions, bad decisions. He's had a lot of mistakes this year. And it's cost us games. I mean, we might be sitting a whole lot better without all those mistakes, especially the Washington game, first game season, where we're up 17 to zip, and those mistakes just help bring them right back in. And to every team that beat us, you guys played the entire game, so that's why you beat us. It's not because, oh, we beat ourselves. No, you, you <laughs> outplayed us for the entire game, and that's why you won. So I go on record saying that. But to keep this thing short, I mean, I got a lot of passion with this thing, and I want to see us win because I want to see us achieve the greatness that we talked about during the Super Bowl parade. Like getting used to a certain feeling, a certain win winning mentality. But we got to do it in ways that are non-conventional. And I point to two players right now that I watch all the time that I think are keys to beating the Giants. And I point to a mentality because of the greatest play in football history. Travis Fulham and Boston Scott. Boston Scott seems like he's a giant killer. Yeah, the smallest guy on the field, he's like 5'6", a little, little pinball. But he's a giant killer. And Travis Fulham, like look at both of those guys. We didn't draft either one of those guys, right? Fulham was bounced around. I think he spent like four days on the Packers and some other teams and stuff, and then he came here. And Boston Scott, I believe, we got from the Saints. And he, we... Drafted Pumphrey, remember that, in the fourth round from San Diego? He was supposed to replace Darren Sproles. Well, it looks like Boston Scott's actually going to replace Darren Sproles, and he's been doing a really good job of it. And if you look at it, those guys, nobody wanted them. And they're doing well. They've been put in a spot we have to use them, right? But then they stepped up to the plate because they're hungry. Kind of like what Jason Kelsey said, hungry dogs run faster. And that brings me to my point, and then my final shout out. Look at the greatest football play, the biggest time in football history. The Philly Special. If you look at that play, not only was it a gutsy call from Doug Peterson's crew, Doug Peterson and Nick Foles on the sideline, look at the three major players that ran that play. Corey Clement got the, got the snap right after Nick Foles. Kill, kill! Right? He came over, he went to the right tackle, right? Corey Clement got the snap, then he came off to the left hand side. Trey Burton got the flip from him and then threw the touchdown to Nick Foles. Corey Clement, undrafted, free agent 2017. Trey Burton, undrafted, free agent 2014. And Nick Foles, as we all know, yeah, we might have drafted him, but he left out, got him traded. The Rams almost left football. The Chiefs come back here, no expectations, ready to sling it when he comes in because he's got nothing to lose. I hope through not just the bye week, but going forward, we have learned our identity. We are a team of people that want that opportunity, are willing to claw, willing to fight. That are the underdogs, the real underdogs. Carson Wentz is not an underdog. Doesn't mean he can't lead them. 
right? But Carson Wentz is not an underdog. So it might, he might have a hard time relating, but you know what? If he, if he learns how to trust these guys, like Fulham, like a guy came through with 150 yard catching in a, in a game, like 10 receptions. It was ridiculous. The guy wants to play. As you can see, if he starts, you don't need a Zach Ertz. I'm not saying get rid of him. I'm not part of that camp right now. I'll talk about that another time. But I'm saying you need to start relying on all these other players and just slaying. High Towers, you know, later draft pick, you know, you got all these other guys. Jalen Rager, I hope he works out. I do, but we're not that good historically with drafting wide receivers. We're just not. But I hope it works out. But I hope you take these, these other guys, these, these underdogs. Come up with game plans. The coaching staff has to you know, put these guys in the, the right position, but then these guys are going to step up their place, play. And this is a team of underdogs, and I think we, we need to establish that that identity, and no better time to do it against the New York Football Giants. And I'm going to end this on this. So Veterans Day a couple days ago, I'm not really huge to talk. Oh, thank you for your service. I get it. All the people say all that stuff. You know, I get it. The real thank you is actually living it, right? So live all out. Live like you care, not just about yourself, but the person next to you, and live your dreams because that's what I know I spent my military service doing, making it possible for other people to live in what I consider the greatest country on the, on the earth because of the possibilities, the opportunities are out there. But the real thank you is to actually uh, take advantage of those opportunities and live in. Living in love around each other, we gotta stop acting like jerks to each other. That being said, big shout out to my my <laughs> a good friend of mine, my favorite Giants fan uh, that I served in the United States Navy with, Javier. Uh, I want to say thank you, my brother, to uh, for your service. Um, but I will end it like this. You are a Giants fan, and you know the Giants suck. I know the Giants suck. We've beaten you eight times in a row. We're about to make it nine times in a row. So, yeah, big shout out to you. Lots of love here from Philly. But you suck. The Giants suck. Let's go, bro.